Welcome back to Nanome. Somebody on my YouTube channel commented that I should make a video about opiates and um, I thought that'd be interesting. So today we're going to be talking about um, opiates and opioid receptors that are located inside of the brain. Um, this first structure we have is the uh, morphine molecule. And morphine is quite an interesting molecule because if you draw it on a two-dimensional piece of paper, it's really hard to see um, what it looks like because there's lots of uh, different ring structures. And so morphine has quite a few rings. So on the first face that we'll look at in morphine, there is one ring here, there is one ring here for two, there's a third one. And then if we were to, if we were to flip the structure like this, we would actually see there's two more rings. There's one right here and one right here for a total of five different ring structures in the compound morphine. I've never seen this compound in three dimensions and that really helps because whenever I saw this compound drawn in two dimensions, there's lots of dashed and wedge lines because uh, the um, sticking of inner, sticking in or out of different rings. So I think it's pretty cool that we can see this in three dimensions. Um, another popular uh, opioid is actually probably you guys have heard of uh, naloxone. Naloxone is a compound that is used for um, overdoses of opiates. So as we can see here on the uh, re my right hand side in yellow, I have uh, morphine. And then on my left hand side of magenta, we have naloxone, which is actually a um, which is actually an opiate that is used to kick opioids out of receptors in a uh, case of somebody overdosing. You guys have probably heard of this compound. And you might notice they're actually, they're actually very similar compounds, funny enough. They don't have that much structurally different from one to the other. Um, to see the structural differences, I'm actually going to overlay the two structures. So what I'm going to basically do is grab, I'm going to grab morphine and stack it over naloxone. Okay, and what we can see the differences among these two drugs are. So what you guys might notice is in the um, in the yellow yellow compound being morphine, and this position right here coming off of the uh, nitrogen, there's just a CH three or a methyl group, and then in naloxone in magenta coming off of this position is actually an allyl group. So basically a um, al alkenin coming off right here. So basically C CH and then CH2 with an alkene kind of bond in the middle. So that, that just makes it a little bit longer. And the other difference between these two drugs is... Uh, the other major difference between morphine and naloxone is actually right here. Coming off of uh, morphine in yellow is actually just an alcohol group. And coming off of naloxone in magenta is just a, um, a ketone group. So, um, a carbon, then double bond oxygen. And it's interesting that that, you know, minor difference is actually, um, able to kick, uh, opiates out of receptors, which I find fascinating from a molecular, uh, docking standpoint. Okay. So now that we have, uh, morphine and naloxone overlaid on top of one another, the reason I overlay those is because those two structures are really similar. When we get to other opiates, this one right here is actually fentanyl. You guys have probably heard of fentanyl. You know, fentanyl overdoses are definitely a problem. And I think the interesting thing to notice uh, between fentanyl versus morphine and naloxone is actually the structure of fentanyl is quite different. Basically, the, the scaffold... The, I wouldn't say these are necessarily derivative derivatives of one another. The fentanyl compound is actually much a much different scaffold. The only similarity I actually noticed between these compounds is actually this this quaternary nitrogen, this this protonated uh, nitrogen with the hydrogen that exists in uh, both of the structures. Other than that, I wouldn't say these compounds are very similar. So I find it quite fascinating that fentanyl even binds to opioid receptors. What we have here is the uh, the mu opioid receptor from the protein data bank. Uh, this has the co-crystallized ligand in this yellow-orange hybrid color. And we'll kind of flip it this way so you guys can get a better view at that co-crystallized ligand uh, right inside the receptor here. So I don't actually know what exact ligand this is, but I can definitely tell it's a, it's a morphine derivative that they probably made as a tool compound for understanding how these um, types of receptors work. And I will mention that the uh, mu opioid receptor is a G protein coupled receptor, uh, similar as serotonin and cannabinoid receptors I've talked about in other of my videos. 
So I think what might be useful is actually looking at some docked poses of different opioids inside the receptor to kind of develop understanding about why um, naloxone is such an effective way of, you know, kicking opioids out of the orthosteric binding pocket of receptors, which it, which it does in fact do. Okay, so now, now I've got morphine uh, docked inside of the orthosteric site of the mu opioid receptor. And let's let's kind of take a look at it a little bit. Um, as we can see, we can actually even see the uh, the binding score. Binding score is a I'd say a crude measure of binding affinity at the uh, at the receptor subtype. It's not an accurate way of measuring it, but it's a very crude measurement. Uh, you could say of how well the drug fits inside the uh, receptor, and that has a Binding uh, kcal score of 6.89 kilocals per mole, and that is morphine inside of there. What I'm now going to do is for a second just overlay um, naloxone, and now we have naloxone bound inside the orthosteric binding pocket. And as we can see, the two compounds, they track really well. They basically just sit on top of each other, and that's basically because they have a very similar structure as we, we talked about before. And naloxone has a binding score of 7.23 kcals per mole. So it actually fits better than um, morphine inside the binding pocket, which might tell us why it's able to come in and kick um, morphine out or another opiate out of the binding pocket. And then if we take a look at, um, let's take a look at fentanyl. So here's fentanyl inside the orthosteric binding pocket. Uh, this has, we have a... A glide score of 7.03 kcals per mole. And if we look back at the docking score for naloxone, naloxone, because it has a higher docking score, it's likely to even displace fentanyl out of the mu opioid receptor. And I think that's really interesting that we can use higher affinity ligands to um, basically create novel ways of turning off receptors. Uh, most of the opioids towards mu opioid receptor are actually agonists. So they basically bind to the receptor, turn it on, much like you could, you know, turn on a um, an amplifier to a really high volume and crank it up to make it really loud. What these compounds like naloxone seem to do is actually when they bind, when a compound like naloxone binds to the orthosteric binding pocket, it changes the conformation of the receptor from an agonist bound um, receptor to an antagonist bound receptor. So it basically just turns off, um, it binds to and turns off all of the cellular signaling activity. And that's kind of how it stops the, um, I guess the, you know, the experience of somebody overdosing on opiates. Just turns off the receptor really quick and it's really effective. Okay, so I'll do a little outro and I'll just talk about it's studies like these that we can actually use as scientists, you know, to develop better ligands that can bind to the receptor in a more selective way. And, you know, this this strategy was actually used for developing naloxone um, to be a compound that can actually save people's lives because, you know, as we know, the op opioid ec epidemic uh, is still pretty bad and rampant, I think, uh, you know, across the whole world, unfortunately. But, you know, if we can better understand how to build ligands to, you know, save people's lives, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Till next time, I uh, hope you guys stay curious about this virtual reality platform. Bye.